MS Winter Spark. This session, titled How to Ingest Data with Ada Azure Data Explorer, is presented by Savia Gitlin and Vladik Branovich. Over to you guys. Thank you, Daniel, so much for helping us today and introducing us. Uh, so again, I, I'm Svia Gitlin. I'm a program manager uh, for Azure Data Explorer Custo, responsible for bringing uh, uh, ingestion uh, and uh, SDKs and libraries. And today with me, Vladik. Uh, and in the next hour, we are going to share with you uh, First of all, we will start with a short, very short overview and a reminder what Azure Data Explorer is, a couple of minutes of reminders. Then we will talk about the architecture and the principles about of Azure Data Explorer ingestion methods. And of course, we will finish with uh, all the brief about all the methods that exist today to bring data into Azure Data Explorer and with demos of many of the uh, capabilities. So we, we thank you that you will join us today and let's start. As the transforming power of big data expands across business environments, the volume of the information streams also grows to new magnitudes. To discover valuable business insights, answer critical questions, and make data-driven decisions on the go, massive amounts of data need to be stored and analyzed in seconds. Azure Data Explorer is a high-performance big data analytics platform that brings every business the power to explore that ocean of data. Featuring the intuitive Custo query language and powerful ingestion and storage capabilities, Azure Data Explorer is the perfect service to analyze high volumes of fresh and historical data in the cloud. By analyzing structured, semi-structured, and unstructured data across time series and leveraging machine learning, Azure Data Explorer Explorer makes it simple to extract key insights from your data, spotting patterns and trends, and creating forecasting models. Optimized for high-performance data exploration, Azure Data Explorer provides near real-time access to large volumes of data and allows fast iterations to analyze up to petabytes of information in just seconds. And by extracting values in runtime, Azure Data Explorer bridges the worlds of unstructured text logs, structured data, and semi-structured formats with nested structures like JSON. Built for real time, the platform provides a great number of high-speed data ingestion options to stream in fast-flowing data from your applications, IoT devices, websites, or services, and make them available on the go. With the help of its adaptable design, you can automatically scale your capacity as your business needs change, ingesting up to terabytes of data in seconds. Its flexible framework allows you to control your operation costs, paying only for what you need, and combining your fast storage with permanent storage at commodity pricing for future use. Azure Data Explorer's fully managed platform scales automatically to meet your demands and allows for embedding in single or multi-tenant SaaS analytics solutions. This way, you won't ever need to care about maintaining the services, infrastructures, and database, just about exploring the insights that will make your business evolve. Azure Data Explorer, unleash the power of big data analytics and make your business grow. As okay, so we saw a very short video of what Azure Data Explorer is and now let's start to, to explain it. So first of all, Azure Data Explorer is a big data analytics cloud platform optimized for interactive ad hoc query. Very complicated sentence that comes and explain in one in one sentence what is the meaning. But let's try and uh, to understand uh, word by word. First of all, big data. Big data stands for the three V's: velocity, variety, and volume. Volume half a tera and above, whether you have a service that you need to contain data and to store data and to query data that is more than half a tera, let's say a couple of dozens of tera, even petabytes of information, Azure Data Explorer can support it. Also variety, variety of sources, 
variety of formats, whether a variety of, of sources, whether it's on-prem and cloud, different cloud services for Microsoft and non-Microsoft. Also formats, different formats of information, uh, structure, semi-structure and unstructured, and also um, different structure of information, whether each source can bring data in a different ways. Uh, we know when we plan our service, we know what we need today. But one of the things and the challenges of today was that we need to uh, prepare ourselves for tomorrow. But how can we plan something that is unpredictable? How can we plan something that we don't know what will be the need and what will, will be the uh, requirements? For that, we build a system, a service that help you to enable backward compatibility with any new structure that were added. You can add more and more uh, columns and you can add more and more different structure, leveraging the mapping capability that uh, attach different sources into existing table without the need of building uh, multiple uh, tables, but only multiple, only different connectors with mappings. Azure Data Explorer support all the traditional query uh, query analytics, query capabilities and operators running over terabytes of information, turn information in high performance. Whenever, whether you would like to start and run where, uh, sorting or filters, join between tables, between database and even between cluster, unions, uh, time series analysis, prediction and anomaly detection, you can run it and everything is part of the, uh, the service. Azure Data Explorer is a fully managed service. What does it mean? First of all, like any Azure service, it means that the service, the structure, the machines are managed by Azure. Secondary, it's, you can also have the ability for uh, auto scale up and uh, up and also down because most of the services allows you to add more and more instances per use. But Azure Data Explorer also allows you and also can do it for you to reduce uh, instances whenever you don't need it. It's also a fully managed database, meaning that you can have the ability, uh, the service has the ability to control and to manage the way that the data will be shared across the different instances of the, of the cluster and how concurrent queries will run to provide the maximum uh, performance to the end users, how to control concurrent user and how to control concurrent customers and to provide the best efficiency and performance to each one of them. Um, Azure Data Explorer built by the service without, cost, without users uh, help the indexes and the partitions. And with that, it's helped the customer to focus on the actual business of the of the is a service instead of uh, maintaining the infrastructure so as i mentioned before azure data explorer is a database platform we have a mo the most uh, the most common scenarios are first of all uh, using as a telemetry system to collect data from logs, from IoT devices, from web services, from whatever you need. The second one is to build a service, a solution on top of Azure Data Explorer for services that requires high performance and store high amount of data. Azure Data Explorer was built where, uh, about seven or eight years ago, actually in 2015. Uh, when four founders from Microsoft, uh, they were part of the Power BI teams and they look for a solution that can provide them a way to run fully performed analytics queries over tons of information and with high performance. They look for a solution uh, for Microsoft uh, uh, solutions and also out of Microsoft and they couldn't find something that was also priceable and also capable enough to uh, provide them all the requirements that they look for. So they decided to develop something. And six months afterward, almost 
uh, most my, uh, all, we already have uh, new customers for Microsoft that decided to take Azure Data Explorer Custo code name as their own service. And by 2017, some of those services like uh, Defender, like uh, uh, Log Analytics and other, they expose the KQL Custo query language as their own user experience. And it was only natural that uh, that by 2018, Azure Data Explorer went to GA as a service, Azure service and customer can use it um, as their own needs. Azure Data Explorer, as I mentioned, uh, runs KQL, Custoc Query Language, which is uh, a very intuitive query uh, uh, language that enables the customer the ability to build more and more layer as it needs for Hedox queries. So this was a very short reminder of what Azure Data Explorer is. And if you are looking to get more information, please join the uh, What is Azure Data Explorer session by Uri Barash, or you can go to you, our uh, Azure Data Explorer YouTube channel and uh, watch our sessions for further information. And for now, this session is about ingestion, so the next part is about the ingestion overview. And for that, Vladik, can you please? Yes, of course. So, um, welcome to uh, to our talk. So today we will uh, we will talk about uh, what uh, what and how you can do to easily ingest your data into uh, into Azure Data Explorer. Uh, so uh, what you see here in this uh, in this slide is uh, uh, our little internal secret that when you uh, provision yourself uh, an ADX cluster, uh, you get services. Uh, the uh, the engine service is the one that uh, that you run your queries against. Um, this is the most uh, most well known. Um, a service and endpoint of uh, of ADX, uh, but it comes in tandem with another service that uh, uh, that we call a data management service, and um, it is uh, it is actually an entire service dedicated to the sole purpose of getting your data from where it is uh, created or published, uh, and uh, getting it in the most uh, in the most efficient way. <clears throat> To, uh, to the state where it can be uh, ingested, indexed, compressed, and stored in uh, ADX internal uh, format that allows for our lightning fast uh, queries. Um, so the um, uh, whenever uh, ingestion is uh, is concerned, um, the uh, the job of uh, of the data management service is first of all to pull. Uh, to pull the data from the exter external sources such as uh, event hubs or IoT hubs uh, to perform uh, some preliminary validations to make sure that the data is uh, is uh, targeted to the to uh, to an existing uh, to an existing database uh, on your uh, uh, in your cluster. Um, we will the data management service will uh, apply some batching logic to uh, uh, to make the ingest operation more effective. Uh, when needed, it will perform format conversions. Uh, this is especially true for Microsoft internal pipelines, less so for uh, uh, for public ones. Uh, <clears throat> this service is responsible for uh, for load management. Uh, on the engine on the engine service to make sure it's not overwhelmed by the uh, by the ingress rate and allow uh, and allow the engine service uh, the uh, uh, the time and the ability to scale according to uh, to increasing rates <clears throat> and it uh, it also provides capabilities of uh, of retrying in case of any uh, transient error uh, such as uh, storage throttling or uh, or temporary uh, network issues okay right so um 
a word about uh, about uh, data formats and how the data lands in uh, in ADX. Uh, so uh, for source formats, we support uh, most of the tabular formats like uh, uh, comma separated, tab separated, pipe separated, almost whatever separated values. Um, for semi-structured data, we support uh, uh, JSON uh, for the major flavors like JSON lines, uh, multi-line JSONs. Uh, we support Avro in uh, uh, including the uh, including the Apache flavor. Uh, ORC and Parquet are also supported. Uh, the payload can be uh, can be compressed with the uh, zip and gzip where appropriate. <clears throat> um, there is a technique in uh, uh, on the on ADX ingestion pipelines to uh, to con that allows uh, customers to control uh, to control the correlation or to uh, to control the adjustment of the data schema to the table schema. Uh, for instance, consider uh, consider if you if you have a really uh, a really wide uh, schema in the so at the source, let's say uh, 200 columns, and you are only interested to query on on 50 of them. Uh, so uh, in ADX, you can actually uh, you can actually throw the columns you don't need away before uh, before the actual ingestion, uh, and we do this uh, by uh, by means of a mechanism that we call uh, ingestion column mapping. Uh, these uh, column mapping objects uh, serve the, are serving the purpose of actually, uh, uh, as I said, adjusting the uh, the source data schema to the table schema. They can be uh, they can be used uh, to rename, reorder, on or or even skip fields uh, from the source data. Um, in general, we have like two major types of uh, of uh, of column mappings: uh, um, CSV mappings that uh, are uh, that are oriented at uh, at tabular formats, where uh, the ordinal is what denotes the the field in the source data, uh, and uh, uh, JSON and uh, and Avro mappings that actually uh, need need one to, to provide a, a path to the field in order to identify it. Um, so uh, while column mappings allow us uh, some some degree of uh, of very primitive uh, pre ingestion uh, transformations on the data, uh, ADX uh, provides also provides a mechanism for post ingestion uh, EDL, uh, rather uh, simple one, but powerful enough. Uh, so uh, this uh, this feature is called update policies, and essentially um, they provide the customer the ability to create derived tables or what is uh, called in SQL uh, cascading updates, uh, and the the point is that a customer can define a query that will run on every newly created data shard and the result will be written will be appended to another table so it's a kind of on the spot etl you can you can reshape the data parse fields uh, that are overly complex to be uh, uh, to be to, to be properly parsed during ingestion time uh, filter out unneeded data, create calculated columns, create pre-aggregations if you need uh, stuff like that. Okay. Um, two uh, two flavors, if you will, of uh, uh, of ingestion strategy. Uh, originally, uh, ADX was designed like ADX was designed to consume uh, huge amounts of data uh, in the most efficient way. Um, and the most efficient way means um, the less storage transactions uh, that we can make and the less uh, computing power that we can waste. And so uh, for that purpose, 
the um, the best way is to is to batch the data together. That's why our ingestion service, our data management service, can actually do uh, batching on the incoming data and then uh, pass it in uh, in in batches to the uh, uh, to the engine. This is this this is uh, the most the most uh, throughput optimized uh, uh, ingestion technique. This is also the default one in most uh, in our in most our pipelines. Um, customer can control the um, uh, the the knobs of uh, of this uh, of this batching logic. So batching is is uh, is being performed by uh, by three accesses, like either uh, either a time bucket or number of uh, number of uh, blobs uh, batched together or an, a total size of uh, of the of the batch. So default values are five minutes, 500 blobs or one gigabyte of uncompressed data. Uh, this is in terms of in terms of size, one gigabyte of uncompressed data is is most typically uh, uh, the uh, the sweet spot of the uh, of the batch size. Um, but again, this uh, these limits can be controlled by the uh, by the customer on a di database or on a table level uh, by uh, by altering uh, a, a something that's called ingestion batching policy. Uh, it's uh, really very straightforward. Uh, there is uh, extensive documentation on that, and it can be used to to crank down latencies to uh, like to around 10 seconds even when using batching, batch ingestion, batching ingestion. Um, another option, another way, like uh, as we, uh, as the service uh, evolved, uh, we were tasked with uh, with cases uh, of, um, of trickling ingestion, like uh, large numbers of, uh, of tables uh, that each one is getting very little events, like very low rate of uh, of incoming data, but overall the rate is uh, is quite high. But again, each table is only getting uh, trickles of uh, of input. So uh, additional feature was developed that uh, that uses um, a special mechanism that we will not be discussing in detail today, which allows uh, which allows actually um, seconds latency for uh, for ingestion of really small uh, portions of data up to four megabytes per uh, per portion, and the data is uh, available for query immediately. Uh, um, so this is uh, this is also an option. This uh, um, and uh, and the two can be actually can actually be combined. Batching and streaming can be combined. For instance, on uh, on our event hub or IoT hub uh, ingestions, these techniques uh, can be combined at the customer uh, at the customer choice. Okay. Uh, now we are going to go uh, to go through the uh, uh, through the uh, the left side of this uh, of this slide. Actually, how like from what are the places, what are the the, uh, the sources that we are able to pull data from? Um, uh, let's start with uh, what we call uh, managed ingestion pipelines. Um, the uh, probably the most uh, most popular is the is the standard Azure Event Hub. Um, so uh, ADX cluster can connect to a customer event hub, pull the data from it. <coughs> Sorry. Um, and uh, and ingest it uh, into the uh, target tables. Uh, again, this is a fully managed uh, experience. Uh, data connection is uh, is defined in uh, in Azure portal. Uh, you point to an event hub. Uh, you you decide what uh, like you need to inst to instruct uh, ADX what is the uh, data format whether it's uh, whether the data is compressed and how would you like your data to land in the table and uh, and that's it the cluster will go pull for data um, 
do the uh, do the magic of uh, of batching and ingestion and uh, streaming ingestion is also supported on the uh, on event hub uh, on event hub data connections uh, all a matter of uh, of proper configuration and setup um, next to the event hub we have the um, iot hub uh, which is uh, again very similar to event hub with the uh, with the only like uh, uh, exemption that uh, we like ADX connects to the to the event hub endpoint of IoT hub, uh, and from there it's uh, it's all the same. It's uh, it's yet another uh, event hub. So again, um, all the formats uh, uh, are supported on the event hubs and IoT hubs. Uh, streaming ingestion is supported, uh, and we get to uh, to event grid. <clears throat> Using event grid notifications on uh, uh, on blob creation or blob rename, uh, we are able to ingest data that is written uh, to uh, to blob containers or uh, ADLS Gen2 uh, file systems, uh, and uh, and ingest the data directly from there. Uh, behind the scenes, this pipeline uses an event hub to deliver the event grid notifications. As a uh, as a scalable and uh, and reliable uh, transport. Uh, in the future, we will probably be uh, be offering a direct integration with their Azure Event Grid, where uh, ADX uh, will be uh, defined as a, as an Event Grid notification sync. So managed pipelines aside. Um, we offer uh, client libraries for uh, to query and to ingest the uh, data uh, into uh, ADX. Um, in terms of in terms of cogs and perf, uh, probably programmatic ingestion is the most is the most efficient and flexible one. Uh, so you do get to write a little code, uh, but it uh, effectively it's not much and. Uh, and the gains are uh, are high. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, the entire uh, Windows Cyber Defense uh, service, uh, they are ingesting their data using uh, using code they wrote using our uh, with our SDKs. Um, uh, it is it is available in uh, in several languages. Uh, it's available for a, for a .NET framework and .NET Core. And we recently started publishing uh, a net standard version of, uh, uh, of of this SDK. It's also available in Python, Java, Node.js, and Go. Um, let's see it for Matic Access. Um, in terms of the uh, open source community, uh, so we have several uh, several connectors uh, out there. We have a plugin for uh, for Logstash uh, that is under the hoods. It's using our Java uh, SDK, and we have a, a, a Kafka Sync that is also using Java SDK. And uh, our Kafka Sync was recently uh, certified by Confluent, achieved uh, gold certification. Yay! Um, uh, and recently, um, um, there was uh, like recently we uh, we worked with the um, with the uh, with the with the company that works on FluentBit, and we released a FluentBit connector uh, that it although it doesn't connect directly to ADX, it allows you uh, to stream your data to uh, to Azure Blobs, and from there. Uh, uh, an event grid data connection can be set up into uh, into ADX. Okay, a word on uh, a word on automated pipelines. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Vladik. It was very interesting. So, as a data factory, we all uh, agree and know the uh, capabilities and the rich options that you can do with Azure Data Factory. Uh, Ver Azure Data Explorer uh, support variety of connectors in Azure Data Factory, in ADF. First of all, copy, 
a look look up commands and a, a template that we were published to enable bulk copy of huge databases or huge data from one uh, sort into Azure Data Explorer. It's very good for backfill, for example. Uh, our suggestion to use Azure Data Factory whenever you need to copy data from uh, on-prem, from different formats, unsupported formats from different sources that are not supported today uh, and enable you to do it with the copy activity. Also, you can uh, run command activity within dot ingest uh, to enable uh, ingestions uh, into the uh, into the service. You have the Microsoft Power Automate, which is the new name of uh, Microsoft Flow, to enable your automatic uh, uh, flows over Azure Data Explorer. Whenever you run, for example, queries and you would like to uh, response based on the results, it's a very good way to do that to automate your uh, pipeline your pipeline over the Azure Data Explorer. Uh, tools. There are uh, two common tools to enable you ingest data into Azure Data Explorer. The first one is Light Ingest. Whenever you have Light Ingest, is a CLI uh, command tool that enables you a very strong uh, tools that enable you to ingest data, unlimited amount of data from a source, a local, a, a container, a folder, uh, into Azure Data Explorer. It's run, it, you can run it async, async or sync. Our preferences is to start with something small. Let's start with two, see that everything works fine and then start uh, to ingest everything asynchronic uh, into the table and whenever it will finish, you will, uh, let, uh, you will get a notification. The next one is one click ingestion. One click ingestion is a set of capabilities that provide intuitive uh, a user experience a wizard that enable you to connect a source of information and based on the source, the service automatically infer what is the suggested schema of the table and the mapping to support this source. And later you can ingest the data as a one time ingestion or as an ongoing ingestion with Event Grid or Event Hub. Uh, this is a very uh, easy tool for newcomers, for customers that just meet with Azure Data Explorer and just want to start and to explore the capabilities, but also for real-time customers in production that has a massive production flows and wants to uh, define their pipelines, the managed pipelines that they, Vladik mentioned before, and they want to do it easily with minimal mistakes. So now uh, I think that we are ready for some demos. Ready or not, here we come. OK, so welcome to uh, uh, Cousteau Web Explorer. This is the web ex uh, version of Azure Data Explorer uh, uh, tool. This is the tool that you are familiar with, the query capability. Here you run queries and get results. Uh, this is the dashboard and start from um, actually uh, Sunday, you are going to have a new landing page which called data that uh, that collect all the ingestion and creation capabilities that exist today with ingestion wizard. Uh, here you can find, uh, you can start and define what you uh, are willing to do. If, for example, let's start with something basic, we would like to ingest data from a local file. We click on, um, okay, here, ingest data from local file, ingest, of course, on the learn more, you can get more details and explanation on each and every byte. Here you can pick what is the cluster that you would like to ingest the data to. If it's not in the list, you can create a connection and the, and the cluster will, uh, will display on the dropdown. What is the database and of course the table. You can decide whether to pick one of the existing tables or whether you would like to create a new table. Uh, Spark 2021. So I decided to take a new table. What uh, The source will be a, a file. I can pick up to 10 files to ingest into this table. Um, of course, it's not a limitation of the uh, service, it's just a, 
um, the capabilities that we allowed as a beginning uh, through this uh, wizard for local files. So now uh, the service is uploading the files. We need to define a primary defining file, meaning this file will define the schema of the table and all the other ingestion will be run based on this schema. And I'm moving to the next steps. The next steps telling allow me to change uh, the schema structure. Here I have this. Uh, this is the inferred structure. Everything, as you can see, is running automatically. Uh, the, the, we took a sample from the file and this is the suggested schema of the information. At this point, uh, the service identified that the data format is JSON. If I think that it's different one, I can change it, but now I think that he decided uh, correctly. I can define what is, the what is the nested level, whether I would like to have some dynamics columns like I have here, or whether I would like to have it flat, and then I add a nested level of two. If I, uh, I can change the nested level from one to whatever I want, and I and I am creating a new mapping. Mapping, as Vladik mentioned before, is the set of rules that connect between source and source and destination and a table. This allows us also to connect different type of source and different type of formats into one table. It's very powerful capability. At this point, I decided to <coughs> take the nested level of two without dynamics columns. Now I can delete some of the columns. I can update. Uh, uh, columns, meaning that I can change the name, the type, if by X, if uh, the service identify wrongly the type, and also for uh, numeric values, I can have transformation that will uh, run um, function over the data to uh, um, to specific logics that are supported today. For more information, there is uh, a link to get to understand more. Um, now I would like also, no, sorry, I would like to add new column. Why? I'm not sure what I am going to do with this uh, table. So I would like also to have the dynamic column uh, stored as a separate column. I will create a new one, dot row header. This is the name of the attribute of the dynamic attribute that includes uh, some of the par uh, parameters. And I create now a new columns row header. So I will have all the structure information side by side with the dynamic columns, meaning that if tomorrow I will decide to add more columns, more attributes to the row header, uh, the data will be stored as part of this column. And I will always have this information and I will be able to make adjustment with the table without any data lost. Start ingestion and the data will be ingested automatically. Here I can see that the data is now uh, ingested and the table was created. The data is ingested and I can go and query to take a sample of the information or if I will, I will decide that I made a mistake and I would like to revert everything, I can do undo that revert everything or just delete the new data that I have just ingested. For this example, I would take, take 10, uh, just to uh, see that the data was ingested correctly as I was expected it to be. Ah, and no, there is an error here. Ah. Somehow by mistake, I have added a semicolon. Okay, so we said that I, uh, and you can see that the data was ingested correctly. Uh, more options that I have here, I can have ingestion from a local file from blobs, I have also ingestion from a container, a, a container, ADLS Gen 1, Gen 2, and Event Hub. Uh, I would like to have a short demo of how to ingest data from a event grid, a, from a container, sorry, and then I will jump to one of the new features that is going to be released uh, in the next couple of days. Uh, I, I will do it very fast because I would like to leave some time for questions. So please use this time to post your questions to our Q&A and uh, Vladix and myself will take and uh, take the answer this question uh, in a few minutes. 
Okay, uh, so next. Now I would like to ingest data. I would like to create a new table, uh, Spark Winter to 2021. And this one will include data from container. Let's see that uh, my internet is killing me now. Okay, it's working. Give me a second. Wonderful. We have it. Uh, so I'm going to my container and I need to generate a SAS URL. I think it's the most common issue that we have with customers that they are trying to put a URL of the blob instead of the SAS URL. We need a permission to access the data. Read access is enough. We don't need more than that, but we do need to access a read. Okay, I'm copying my SAS URL and moving on. Now the service identify how many uh, blobs I have in this container and I pick again the schema defining file same as we did earlier. The one file that will define the schema for the rest of the tables. Most likely all this all the blobs in this container will have the similar structure and we need one that will do that. Currently there is a limitation up to 1000 items to ingest with this way, but we will increase it. Uh, and if you need more than that, you can use the light ingest uh, tools that I described, I, I mentioned earlier. Here, same, uh, we ingest the data. I just want to, ah, one more thing that I would like to mention that here you can have all the commands that you can learn how to ingest data for further use. Once you click on start ingestion, you will see here that the ingestion happens, but here you have also a new capability, event grid. Event grid, by clicking on this one, I will get a new tab that point me into Azure portal. Azure portal, uh, we will generate automatically the resources that in, uh, that required in order to have an event grid that listen to this container. Every new blob that will be created in this container they have the event grid will notify that there is a new item in this container and Azure Data Explorer will immediately will the the batching policy that the default is five minutes but we can change it uh, will go access uh, access the data pull it into a queue and will ingest it so by clicking on the create button we will have the the ingestion will be continuously into the table and every change will be in ingested automatically into the table. This will help a customer. This is a very common scenario for our customer to ingest data in production scenarios. One more items that we have is also from Event Hub. Uh, many of our customer has some challenges to understand what is the event structure. And when they are trying to build a table that will meet with the event structure, Wow, I have a problem, Houston. Okay, uh, when they need to define what is the event structure, they have some issues there. So to, in, to simplify the life of our customer, we decided that we will do it in their behalf. So the customer can here define what is the events, what is the event hub that generate events, connect to it, and immediately the service will edit, it will define the schema and suggest the user what is the suggested schema to support those events and the table will be generated and the continuously ingested data will happen automatically, meaning that all the events that will be ingested from this, that will be passed through this event hub will be ingested into the table. Okay, I, will, I would like to be more precise. All the events that meet with the data formats that the customer will define as part of this definition would be ingested automatically into this table. So I would like to leave some time for questions. Uh, one more thing that I'm really anxious to see, uh, to, to present you is a new capability. Uh, one of the most, uh, one of the scenarios that uh, our customer are using is external tables. External tables is the ability to query data that exists on the lake 
won't be ingested into the database, but the user would like to query those inform this information. For that, we have the external table capability. You can ingest, uh, you can create a table that is an empty table. The only thing that had that this table uh, contains is the metadata of the structure and the references for the container. And whenever we run queries on external table, the query will run automatically over the lake. The performance are uh, those. This scenario is very good whenever a customer has historical data that is a uh, query once in a while, not in a very often situation. And he would like, but he would like to have the access and the permission to query the data for a specific scenario. So this is a very common scenario for those uh, situation. Uh, Okay, so please post your question. And just before we are moving for those questions, I would like, uh, I would like to share some important uh, um, resources that can help uh, for our uh, future engagement. First of all, uh, we have a, a tech community blog. A tech community blog that uh, we share post of any new features and whenever we have something new that we can share with customers you are more than welcome to track it and to get more information about it there are three free online courses of plural site over azure data explorer how to start with azure data explorer how to start uh, with kql custo query language and advanced topics with custo with azure data explorer those three courses are free. Uh, plural side courses are free, and you are more than welcome to reach to them and to share also with uh, with you and customers. There are there is Teams channel, Azure Data Explorer 